Yeah. Hi. Uh, sorry about the delay. That was just some technical problems. So um, welcome. And this, so as we know, this talk is about uh, the different internship programs with uh, in which you can participate, uh, which OpenStack participates in as well. So just giving you a brief introduction of me. I'm Saili Lonkar, and um, I started myself as an intern. So my career started in OpenStack as an intern in 2013. And since then, I've been with OpenStack. So the internship has really helped me. And um, I'd like to share my experience uh, through the years. Uh, so the agenda for today will probably be, I'm going to give you a short introduction about uh, uh, what wh what is the scope that you all are looking at when I'm talking about these internship programs? Then the second thing would be about the internship, some details, the stipend, the time, and then how uh, wh what is required to contribute to an open source project, and the application process for the internship, and lastly the do's and don'ts, and maybe some uh, I'll give you all some quick tips that we've seen across these few years that help to get. Uh, get into get selected as an intern. So yeah, so I'm assuming all of y'all are looking for some kind of internship or some way to get involved with Open Seconds and that y'all are here for that. So let's look at what are what are we looking at? Like what are the options? So um, as you see, I've I've added a few really flashy logos on the screen, and they cover a lot of different area in the software industry. So take it, um, OpenStack would be one of the areas in the cloud world, like AWS. So OpenStack is probably the best way, way to get involved in the cloud technology. Then there are a couple of Linux distribution. Uh, a couple of Linux. Ah, uh, why? There are a couple of Linux distribution like SUSE, Fedora, Ubuntu also participates. Then there is, if you're interested in uh, stuff like uh, 3D modeling, then there's Blender. If you're interested in a little bit of a research kind of internship, with, then you can go for CERN. Then there is version control, so Git, GitHub, all of them participate in these internships. And if you're interested in web, then you have uh, Mozilla, then storage, Ceph. If you're interested in hardware kind of an internship, then you can go for BeagleBone. So there's, and these are just some of the um, organizations that participate. There are over 100 organizations. So this, w what I'm trying to convey by this is that it's a really good way to get involved with the biggest um, companies in the. Uh, that are participating, that are actually helping you to get involved with them at a very early stage. So normally, freshers don't get an opportunity to work with big companies that easily. And this provides a very easy and a good way to um, communicate with them, interact with them, grow, grow on your skills as you interact with them. Yeah. So this is probably just a reaction to it's like, whoa, so many options, right? So now let's talk about the internship programs a little bit. So this is from the Outreach internship. So we have two kinds, so Outreach and Google Summer of Code. So what Outreach focuses at is, why are these changing on their own? What Outreach focuses at is, uh, it's, it's a three-month internship period. And um, it happens twice a year. And it's open to all the underrepresented groups. So it's mainly focusing on women, then gender cured people. In USA, it's open to all the black, African Americans. So you're tr we're trying to cover all the underrepresented groups in the world so that we can also involve them in the latest technologies and give them an opportunity to try it out. So uh, our treaty is a very, uh, I would say it's it's less complicated as an internship as compared to Google Summer of Codes, technicality-wise. It's purely technical, but they, it also gives beginners more of a um, uh, learning ground as compared to Google Summer of Codes. 
And uh, as you see, the stipend is around 5,500 US dollars for three months, and it's split in three installations. So uh, through the three months, you get, uh, you, the, they get, you get part of the money uh, as you pass the three stages of your internship. And um, OK, so now next is the Google Summer of Code internship. And uh, this is specifically only for students all over the world and not, for, uh, not targeting anything else. And uh, yeah, so and Google Summer of Code has been running for much more time than the Outre Outreachy program. So Outreachy basically was influenced by Google Summer of Code. So some of the differences in the program, as you see, um, Outreach is for underrepresented groups, whereas Google Summer of Code is only for students. Outreach happens twice a year. Google Summer of Code is just one round. And uh, the main thing about Outreach is that once you are selected as an intern, you are not allowed to apply again for the same thing. But Google Summer of Code, you can apply multiple times and to various projects. But Outreach is only once. And um, Outreach is sponsored by many different organizations, uh, open source organizations, whereas uh, Google Summer of Codes is sponsored by Google mainly. OK, so here I thought maybe it's interesting to see some statistics about the programs over the years. So Google Summer of Codes started in 2005. And um, it started with 400 students and 40 open source organizations. And we had uh, students from around 49 countries. And the success rate was around 80%, whereas now we have almost 1,051 students. And uh, the number of organizations have just multiplied so much. And also across 73 countries, and the success rate is, we, as we've seen over the years, it's only increasing. It's, we never saw a drop in the success rate. And um, the Outreach started, uh, like I said, it started a lot after Google Summer of Code. And it started with one organization that was GNOME and eight participants. So it was really small. And over time, now we have almost 37 participants and 16 organizations. OK, so um, how many of you all here have contributed to an open source project or have been involved in some way? So yeah, so I'm just going to go through how OpenStack does it and the general idea, like what 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 all. So all the open source projects have some set of things that you need and a process. So I will try to explain the process here. So how do we start contributing to an open source project, right? Because it's you never know where to start, and there's so much different. So, like, if you want to contribute to something like OpenStack, it's a huge code base, and you have really no idea where where you need to start. So, if uh, of course, uh, depending on what kind of contribution, here we'll focus on development and documentation. So, the first and foremost, most important thing when we when some intern approaches us, we tell them that you need to set up a dev environment. So. The first thing you need to know is what kind of environment you're playing with, right? So, and for this, we use DevStack to set up the dev environment. It's easiest. It can deploy multiple services at the, in one small environment, and it's not too much effort. It's just one script that you need to run. And if you all want to uh, just take a look at where to find it, I've added a link so you can find it in the presentation later. Then uh, the next thing is so. All the open source projects, they have a way, they have a workflow. So people file bugs, uh, then other people can fix the bugs. So normally the f second step would be to find a simple bug, because you're just starting. You ha don't have such a big, such an idea about uh, the code base. So you just want to go through the code base, try to figure out things. So you will probably pick up a project and try to find a bug in the project. So in OpenStack, all the bugs that are easy are tagged by a low-hanging fruit tag. right? So with these tags, it's normally for newcomers. So these are really easy bugs that you can fix in the project that you're interested in. Uh, then you try to reproduce the bug in your environment. So supposing, uh, if you all know about the Horizon dashboard, right? And supposing the bug says that 
some some spelling is wrong on one of the tabs. So in the code base, you need to find where this where this is implemented. So you'll probably just look through the code base in your development environment and try to see the error. Just replicate the error. So you have an idea of what you're trying to fix. Then uh, the next is, of course, when it's such a big project, you need help. And you should not be afraid to ask for help, because we have a huge community here uh, which is trying to help out. And um, so the most convenient ways to reach out to the people in the community are by the IRC channels. So you can just, if uh, IRC is Internet Relay Chat. So if you all don't have an idea, you can just look it up. But you can join the channel for the project name. So if you want to contribute to Horizon, it would be hash OpenStack Horizon and so on. And also mailing list is another way to get in touch. You can check the PTL for the project, so the main people contributing to the project, and uh, then just contact them by email or on IRC. Uh, so next, when you finally talk to the community, you try to reproduce a bug, maybe find a fix for the bug, right? Uh, and you want to show the community what you've done. So you have a workflow for this, which uh, helps you to publish your changes. It's a review system. Uh, so once you're done with the dev setup and you have the fix, then you should probably go. Uh, OpenStack uses Gedit for their workflow. So you can go to the wiki page that I've pointed uh, later on and um, try to set up. So you have to set up your version control. We use Git review. So just uh, by running some commands, you can publish your changes. And they'll be uh, on this review.openstack.org. You can see your patch with the changes that you have made. And so the reviewers can review your changes and probably tell you some, maybe it's not the right way to fix it or there's a better way to fix it. So they leave their comments on that. And then you can keep making the changes until it's, until it's approved. So mostly for all the OpenStack projects, you need at least two plus twos. So plus two is uh, given by a core reviewer of the project for, uh, the pro uh, for your patch to be merged. So yeah, it's kind of, that's the whole process. So, and this is not the only way to be involved. So we encourage all the interns to also do a few other things like code review, because code review helps you to get a lot of insight on how other people are changing it. And you know, from experience, you can learn better what, what, what needs to be changed. And it's faster learning, basically. And it's also helpful to the community when you give back some feedback. It's a good way to interact with them. Then reporting bugs. So if you're using the software and you find some bugs, you should always report them so somebody can fix them. Or if you want to fix them, you can fix them as well. Uh, then triaging bug is just that if somebody has filed a bug, so in OpenStack, you need to <coughs> confirm this bug, that it's actually a valid bug. Because sometimes it can be specific to somebody's environment. And it may not apply to, the, and, uh, to everybody. So, you go through the process of triaging bugs. So this also helps you to get more familiar with the environment and with all the other services running in OpenStack. Uh, then documentation is a good way to get involved if you're not keen on too many technical changes. Then OpenStack is really huge on document, and they have really cool tools. So it's, it's equal to uh, being a developer in, in at least in OpenStack communities because of the large, uh, large documentation that we have here. Uh, then we have a huge translation team behind OpenStack. So now uh, OpenStack is available in multiple languages. So if you're probably, if you know so many languages and you're comfortable with something, you can help them to uh, provide the dashboard and the other services in your preferred language. Uh, then we have diversity groups who take care of all the uh, different underrepresented groups, or you want, we, we just basically want that there is equal representation of male and female in the community. So these are some groups who are really trying hard to get this up to balance. And uh, you can also join the foundation for some management related roles. So we have a huge marketing team, but this would probably come a little later when you're involved into the community. So this would probably, after your internship or something, you can once you know the right people, you can, if you have ideas, you can just talk to them and get on board with them. 
Um, now, uh, I will explain the application process to these uh, internships, Outreach and Google Summer of Codes. So, how do we apply? So, you select any project. So, if you are selecting OpenStack, under that we have a large variety of smaller sub projects like we have Horizon, NOAA, uh, Neutron. So, depending on your interest, you can select a project. This wiki page points to the list of projects, and you can just go through all of them and uh, just look for some more details on that. So, depending on your interest, if you're interested in networking or UI or um, hypervisors or something, you can select a project. Then uh, you need to get in touch with the mentors. Also, the list of mentors for the project would be given on the wiki page. So, you can, and they're with their IRC handle, so you can just uh, ping them and tell them that, okay, I'm interested in your project. Can you help me to find a bug or um, something like that to help? You basically need some guidance to get started, and the mentors are the best people to reach out. And also that so that the mentors know that you're you're interested in the project, so they can communicate with you further on. Uh, and also mailing list is if you have a general question, then you can just ask them on the mailing list. Uh, then you need to make a small contribution, and this is pretty much a requirement. Uh, so your application will. I think almost 100% not be accepted if you don't have a contribution made before you submit your application. So you need a small contribution, so you can do some bug fixing there, depending you can talk to your mentor and decide what you want to do. And uh, then you can fill out, so you have an online application form which asks you a few questions about your previous contributions, involvement with uh, open source in general, and what you did through the internship and some basic questions like that which you need to fill out and submit the application, of course, before the deadline. Um, and another thing that we really encourage uh, interns to do even when while they're applying is to blog about their experiences. This is really important because when you, when you actually start blogging, you realize that it's um, it helps you to sort out all the things that you have done so far and you know where you stand. So it's important and also for other people to learn from your experience and um, just spread awareness. So we uh, encourage people to blog through the internship period as well. So what you must have is a patch that has been accepted and a mentor for the project. So this you need uh, so, so, your uh, so that you can get selected. Okay, now uh, the do's and the don'ts. So for the do's, you must co contribute. And so a lot of people ask me, is it helpful if you uh, submit more patches? So it is, of course, helpful, but it's not a necessity. You can contribute maybe one patch before you submit your application or three, four, but that just makes it stronger. Uh, then you have to be proactive because this is all happening remotely. So you don't, you're not, you're not in front of the mentors. They can't, they haven't seen, they don't know anything about your background. They don't know any um, any information about your work before this. So as much as you interact with your mentors, the more they know about your skill sets, and the better it is for you. So it's not that you need to be really high on your skill sets. It's just that they need to be aware of where you are, so they can help you in that direction. Then uh, don't be afraid to ask questions because this will only help. Uh, you to learn faster. So even if it's a dumb question, you can just just ask. It's okay. Nobody will look down on you, or nobody will say that you're stupid. Uh, then being persistent, because this is really important, especially in the beginning, because setting up your dev environment can take some time. And by sometimes, I mean a few nights. Maybe you're just sitting and trying to set up your dev environment, and it's not working. But you really just need to go on. And you need to be engaged with the community till the end because a lot of times it so happens that in the beginning of the um, program, the interns are talking a lot, but they kind of, in the last month, they have no interaction at all. And this kind of puts the mentors in a difficult position as to how, if they are still interested in the project or not. So this affects them when you're selecting the interns. So it's good to be engaged till the end of your, at least of your application process. And of course, it's better if you do it even after. So what you should not do is, um, 
so this is not seen very often uh, that you know we have some some things like having a bad attitude so by bad attitude i mean if uh, so another background about interns so interns are uh, no sorry about mentors are that mentors are from uh, these companies that are sponsoring right and they have a full time job and they're just doing this to help the community so you need to be a little aware of their situation and probably uh, ask them more politely about when they can give you time and manage because it's of course different time zones as well so it will not help if you really pinging them late at night or something like that so it's more about being a little careful about how you interact with uh, your mentors and in general uh, we've seen in the past that some people kind of started blaming the mentors for not being selected into the program and su such things are really not uh, it's not the kind of environment we want to set because we want more transparency between the mentors and the interns and we don't want um, such things and being competitive so as i've seen it normally it can be good or bad because good because it may push you to do a lot of things but generally in the open source community being competitive is a little uh, look down on because you're trying to overstep somebody rather than this if you're if you're done with a contribution if you're an intern and you're done with one or two contributions rather than being really pushy about making more it would help if you're helping some other interns who are applying to you know just help them out instead of overstepping them so this is something which is given a lot of importance when they look at your application as well and losing contact as i said previously you should stay in touch with your mentors till the end and um application cheating so you should not try to fake in your application or uh give some wrong information or submit a patch that was actually not yours in, in whichever way that's possible i'm not even sure but just avoid such things because then once you set a bad reputation even if you apply 3 4 times after that you're not going to get in this is pretty much once the once it sets some kind of image then it kind of carries on so it's better not to get involved in such a way and uh, lastly some tips that i would uh, like to share from my experiences to make your application stronger so um you need to in in your application so we ask you about some prior work that you've done so it's be best if you if it's open source to provide some links and also to the existing contributions that you've made and anything the your blog everything needs to be given a link so it's easier for the mentors to just go and look at everything uh then like previously i said you should ask questions that's right but sometimes like it's really basic stuff that you just need to type in google and you can find an answer so it's it's always better to do some research before you ask questions if it's the most obvious stuff uh then uh, that also comes to be a part of being independent so we we do want to look for interns who are more independent because mentors so mentors dedicate probably um one hour per day to their students or depending on um how what their arrangement is with the intern but normally it's 1 hour a day so it's good to if the intern is as independent as possible so they can progress faster then uh you should have a good interaction with your mentors this i've been saying over a while because the mentors are the only people who actually say that okay yes i want this applicant in because she's hard working she is proactive and i think she will be able to make it to the internship period uh then uh, also in the application you have to make you have to submit a rough timeline so in these 3 months um your project idea you need to split it in 3 months on how you think you will be implementing it so if you are implementing a feature normally in this in internship period so you need to split it according to the timeline and it's always nice if it's more technical your timeline so you should discuss with your mentor take help and figure out a good timeline to present in your application and stick to it afterwards i mean not hard and fast stick to it but you have a better idea than how you want to um set your goals in the time of the 3 months and um 
it's also better not to have any other commitments like school or a full-time job because you need to give at least 40 hours a week uh, to the internship. So um, preferably check that that's not happening. Um, so this is the, uh, the previous ones were tips before the application and this is during the internship period. What you should do is you should set up daily meetings with your mentor. So be in touch with them as much as possible. Uh, set up a time probably depending on the time zones with your mentor. Uh, then all the projects have weekly meetings on IRC and it's good to attend these meetings so that you know what, what is going on in the project. So if um, supposing you're contributing to Horizon, so you should attend the Horizon weekly meetings, interact with the people, maybe tell them your progress or somewhere you, you are stuck and you need help from them. So uh, and yeah, and your mentor should not be a single point of contact to the community. You should uh, try to talk with everybody in the community, take help from as many people. So this in kind of increases your visibility as well in the community. And you should blog weekly. This is also one of the requirements once you start the internship that you, sh you should blog weekly or at least twice, once in two weeks. And you should track your progress. So according to the timeline or how you decide with your mentors, you should see that, OK, maybe it's two weeks and I should have achieved um, maybe two patches in these two weeks. So I should have completed this um, feature by then. So you should keep tracking it so that you are able to successfully complete your internship in time. And yeah, uh, a lot of times it happens that it happened with me and um, that, you know, you just hit a dead block and you don't understand what to do at all. So uh, it's better to actually seek help before you hit such a dead end uh, by just talking to your mentor, even if it's completely not technical, even if it's something about that's, that you're not understanding about the community or you have some problem with interacting with some somebody, you should just um, try to get some help. And uh, you should focus on completing your tasks. I mean, the other tasks, like I mentioned before, like code review and bug triaging and stuff is the secondary task, but your main focus should be on completing the task that you've taken at hand. And of course, you should attend the OpenStack Summit because this is a really good opportun opportunity to meet your mentors and the other community members. And of course, it's um, as students or you know, it's not always affordable to attend the summit because it's so far away always. And you know, if it's near to you, then you're lucky. But if you're coming from the other part of the world, then it kind of gets a little complicated. But we have a solution for that as well. So OpenStack has a travel support program. Uh, so most, uh, from experience, most of the interns who have uh, participated in the internships get funding from the foundation to attend the summit. So their travel and their stay is paid for uh, by the foundation. So you, you have to apply for the travel support program, of course. So application form is there. You need to fill it before the deadli deadline. Then we have a travel selection committee made out of some board of, mem board of directors and some other people who are involved in the community. And then uh, once if you're selected, then the travel agent from OpenStack will get in touch with you and uh, help you through the accommodation and your stuff. And this is really smooth. And a lot of people have, um, I mean, I'll show you some statistics of the travel support. So this was since Hong Kong, we had 18 people. In Atlanta, we had uh, 20 male, two female. Paris, we had again 13 people. Uh, 13 male and 7 female funded across by the foundation to attend the summit from all over the world. And it's only increasing, the number of females are just increasing, so that's really a good thing that we see because there are, there's more participation. So that was it. <laughs> so questions? Um, if you'll have a question, please come to the microphone. Or anything else that you want to ask. So how do you choose your mentors? Uh, so it depends on uh, the project uh, that uh, you select. So in the beginning, you go through the list of projects. So if, you're, if you want to look for something under OpenStack, 
you can go through the wiki page and see the projects that are listed for the internship and then uh, depending on your interest you can get in touch with the mentor for the project yeah you have designated mentors for the projects so that's all <laughs>